I want to thank Felt Right for sponsoring today's video. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley with Haley Stitches and today I'm going to show you how to make a super simple layer cake quilt. We did a version of this quilt using a charm pack previously on my channel, but I want to show you how to make the same quilt using a layer cake. It gives the look of sashing and borders, but there's no long sashing strips involved. You can grab the free pattern by using the link in the description of this video. The pattern will be free for the next week and after that you can grab it for just $2 in my shop. So grab a layer cake and let's get started. These are the supplies we'll need for today's project. First, you'll need a layer cake. We're gonna use all 42 squares of this layer cake. You also need two and a quarter yards of background fabric. Instead of cutting my strips, I'm actually just gonna use a jelly roll for this tutorial, but the pattern is written for yardage. You'll also need your long quilting ruler, a cutting mat, a rotary cutter, a matching thread. I almost always use this gray by Aurifil, and you can use some pins if you would like to use pins. Everything will be linked in the description of this video. All of the background fabric in this pattern is cut into two and a half inch strips. So I'm gonna speed up the cutting and just use jelly rolls instead for this tutorial. My favorite thing to do with jelly rolls is to lint roll them before I unravel them. They can become super linty, so this is just a nice little trick I like to do to help mitigate some of that lint. I'm working with half jelly rolls here, but I'm going to pull out 29 strips and I'm going to put four of those strips aside for the borders. And here I'm just counting to make sure I have 25 two and a half inch strips. So now we're going to start cutting our background fabric. The first step is to cut off that selvage. And here I am just cutting one strip folded in half. And I'm going to cut this strip into 10 inch rectangles. So I will get a total of four two and a half inch by 10 inch rectangles out of each of these strips and I'll need a total of 42 10 inch rectangles. After you cut all of your 10 inch rectangles, it will need to cut our 12 inch rectangles. So here I'm gonna be able to cut two, two and a half inch by 12 inch rectangles while my fabric is still folded on itself, but I will need to unfold that last bit to get that last cut. It's not quite long enough to get us another two 12 inch rectangles, so I need to lay it flat so that I can get that measurement. So each of these long strips are gonna yield three 12 inch rectangles and we'll need a total of 42 of these 12 inch rectangles. So cut all of your strips until you end up with a total of 42 10 inch rectangles, 42 12 inch rectangles, and then you should still have those four width of fabric strips from the beginning for the borders. Now we're gonna dive into our layer cake. So this pattern is perfect if you have fabric that's just too pretty to cut into because we don't need to cut these 10 inch squares at all. First, we'll sew a 10 inch strip to the right side of your layer cake, and I'm gonna press away from the layer cake square, and then you'll sew the 12 inch rectangle to the bottom. And again, I'm going to press away from the layer cake square. You can press in whatever direction you choose. It really doesn't matter for this pattern. The piece block will measure 12 inches square. So now to make all of the blocks for this pattern, all you have to do is repeat that process of sewing the strips to the layer cake squares. And while I finish sewing all of these blocks, I wanna to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video. When it comes to my sewing space, I want it to be functional, creative, and a place where I can truly focus. That's why I chose Felt Right customizable felt wall tiles. These tiles are more than just beautiful, they're functional too. Thick enough to be used as a pin board, I can pin up my quilt blocks and rearrange them. And even better, flannel, batting, and craft felt stick right to the surface so no pins are needed. I've turned these tiles into a design board by adding batting so I can lay out all of my projects and see how each piece comes together. The batting sticks to the tiles and my quilt blocks stick to the batting. When I'm not using it as a design board, it turns back into a beautiful piece of art in my space. And since they dampen 35% of sound waves, they make this space quieter, which is perfect for when I'm focusing on a project or filming a video. Felt Right even has an entire section on their website dedicated to quilters with designs that fit perfectly into our creative spaces. I chose this star design because I thought it'd be the perfect backdrop for my YouTube videos. Felt Right tiles bring creativity, functionality, and sound dampening to my quilting space. If you're looking to elevate your space, you can shop now using the link in the description of this video. When you're ready to check out, use code Haley Stitches to save 15% on your order. Refresh and customize your sewing space with Felt Right tiles.
Now all of my 42 blocks are pieced together and pressed and I am just going to mix and match all of the fabric and lay them out in a 6 block by 7 block grid. Once I have everything the way that I like it, I like to label the rows with my alphabeties and clover clips and I'll show you how we're going to piece the rows together. A super simple assembly. All we're going to do is sew 6 blocks together end to end to get each row. So you're going to use your standard quarter inch seam allowance for quilting and you can even use those pieced edges as a guide to make sure that everything lines up nicely. So that's where you can pin to make sure that everything is lined up and you get those crisp corners and that sashing and border effect that we want. And here is the pieced row one and you'll repeat that process for each of the rows until you piece all seven rows. And now I'll show you how to sew the rows together. And the trick to keeping things nice and crisp and lined up is pressing the rows in alternate directions. So the top row will press to the right, bottom row to the left, and that'll create a nesting effect, which will make it so we get those crisp intersections. And here is my quilt top entirely pieced, so it doesn't fit in the screen perfectly, but I will give you a nice shot at the end of the full quilt. So now the last step is to just add our borders. So as you can see, the sashing don't line up on the left side and the top, so we have to add that ourselves. So we're going to take our four with the fabric strips from the beginning, cut off the selvage, and we're gonna sew all of these strips end to end to get one super long border strip. So you can sew these however you prefer. I usually like to do this method where it's just straight up and down for piecing, but I know a lot of people like to do the bias join, which gives you a little bit more of a seamless look. So this is what I would do is just feed it through the machine here with a quarter inch seam allowance. But if you want the bias join, all you have to do is join it perpendicular here and sew diagonal corner to corner. And that gives you more of a seamless join. It's a lot less noticeable. Uh, but because we're not doing a ton of joins, I'm just going to do the straight up and down. So here I'm going to take my long sashing strip and just sew it to the left side of the quilt. After it's sewn, I'll cut the strip even with the bottom of the quilt, bring it up to the top, and then use it for the top border. So I'll give you a better look of the final quilt here. So here you can see that top border and side border, and then all of our fabrics really shine. This is a big quilt finishing at 71 inches by 83 inches. If you want another pattern that's perfect for highlighting those big prints or prints you just don't want to cut into, check out this quilt tutorial here. I'll see you there.